Tis there a stone that whoever kisses, he never misses to grow eloquent. Tis he may clamber to a lady's chamber, or become a member of parliament. A noble spouter, he'll sure turn out, or an out and outer to be let alone. Don't try to hinder him, or to bewilder him, for he's a pilgrim of the blind stone. Welcome to another Fact or Fiction, and today's is about a place and not a person, and it's a place that you might have seen in my island vlog. Well, yes, it's the legend of the Blonde Stone. So the most famous, the most famous rendition of the legend involves, well, all the versions of the legend involve a Mike McCarthy, that was a very uh, common sounding name, I imagine. But it's the, the one that's on all the signs um, around Blarney, the signs they've got there, the new, and on their website. It's the one that involves Queen Elizabeth I, so yes, this kind of relates to my other legend, um, my other fact of fiction video. So when Queen Elizabeth I wanted Irish lords to own their lands under the title of her name and the crown, quite a lot didn't want to, and they had to try and argue their case to keep their land. This is what happened to Cormac McCarthy. But he found himself unable to negotiate himself well with Elizabeth's advisers, and it looked as though his land would be going just straight to the crown, and he didn't want that. The legend has it he kissed the Blarney Stone and was given the gift of eloquence and was able to keep his land. But how did good old Cormac hear about this legend? Well, rumour has it the legend had always been known by the family and was told to them by a witch who they had saved from drowning. Um, and this is the Blarney Witch who supposedly resides in the Witch's Stone and comes out every night at night at dusk when the sun sets and grants the wishes of those who visit and walk down the famous wishing steps. She also, you supposedly can see her fire burning in her fireplace in the witch's kitchen. And I love that there might be a witch. I love witches. I've said this before. So yeah, one rumour is that it's the witch they always knew about the stone and he was just like, right, I need to do it. I need to kiss it. Another is that he saw an old lady and the old lady told him about the stone and to kiss it, and that this old lady might have also been the witch, maybe. And that's how he found out about the stone. Good old Queen Bess, a little bit disappointed with the turn of events, branded the whole thing Blarney, and supposedly invented a new word, and a new name for the castle. <laughs> and Cormac got to keep his land, and it stayed in his family for generations, I believe. <laughs> So he's being like, yo, I want to take your castle, and he's like, <laughs> so then he, then he kissed a rock, and then he was like, no, can't have a castle, and she was like, ugh, what, this is all bloody, <laughs> and then she invented a word, yay. So how did the stone get on the castle in the first place? Did the witch put it there herself? Well, that's not really what any of that say, but she might have, maybe I just found a new theory. <laughs> Um, so supposedly the stone had been there pretty much on the castle since it was built in, would you check the date? 1446. <laughs> um, it had been on the top of the castle. Um, so one legend states that the stone was given to the Cormac um, McCarthy, another one, and his family by Robert the Bruce, the famous Scottish hero legend who should be getting his own fact or fiction video at some point should happen maybe um uh robert the bruce <laughs> um in and he gave it to them in 1314 and the stone was given from robert to the mccarthy family as a thanks for the five thousand men they sent over to help robert battle the english at the battle of bannockburn which is a pretty famous battle which i'll probably go into more detail if i do do the robert the bruce video that's um so the stone was supposedly a very important Scottish relic, and it was part of the Destiny Stone? Stone of Destiny. And it was a seating place from the coronation of the first Scottish king in 847. And that it was some kind of um, magical kind of stone that helped pick kings, and um, I think it's described best in the... Blarney vlog, so I was just gonna put that in there. This is how it's described on their sign. Jacob has a blind man tonight. I find a Harry Potter like something like the kings. 
Others suggest that it was brought over to Blarney and Ireland during the Crusades. So basically the Crusades was when lots of people from Europe were going over to the Holy Land and fighting and stealing stuff, um, the Holy Grail supposedly from the Crusades. So yeah, that kind of um, religious memorabilia or like um, stuff like that. And that the Blarney Stone was from the Stone of Izil, Izel, which um, was used by David to hide from Saul. I don't know too much about this biblical story, biblical legend. I'm not that well versed on it. That is another legend. There's also rumours that it's a stone somewhat related to Moses, maybe. Um, but all the kind of modern technology and modern research into the stone has proved that it probably isn't from outside of Ireland at all. So, I mean, definitely probably not from the Holy Land or the Crusades. It's probably not from Scotland either, but Scotland and Ireland aren't that different in terms of the kind of stones you would find. So maybe it could be a gift of the Bruce, but it looks likely that it's not from outside of Ireland. So where did it come from? So another legend of how people learn about kissing the stone and gaining eloquence has nothing to do with Elizabeth I and it might give a clue to how the stone ended up on the castle and how it's traced to being from Ireland. So in this legend, yes, yet another Cormac McCarthy, the, the original builder of the castle, was involved in a lawsuit and he was a bit worried about it so he prayed to the Irish um, Gaelic Celtic um, goddess of Cleona and she apparently visited him and told him that when he awoke the next day he should kiss the first stone that he saw. So Cormac awoke, kissed the stone, went to his trial and he won his case and he, I don't know if the case was against him keeping his land, um, similar to that of the other Cormac McCarthy. Um, doesn't go into too much detail. And then after this, he found the stone and placed it, pride of place, at the very top of his castle. So, was the stone a gift from Scottish legend Robert the Bruce or magical work of an Irish goddess? And uh, Cleodona, Cle Cleo, no, what was I saying? Cleona, <laughs> I hope I said that right earlier. Cleona, pronounced like Fiona, I got it. Um, was the goddess of the beautiful Celtic Otherworld. It was meant to be a very beautiful goddess. Um, most of them are, aren't they? <laughs> um, so yeah, was it her work or was it the witch? Did the witch say the stone had already like always been there but did she make it magic with her magical witch powers? Um, is the witch of Barney even real? Does she come out at night? I would love to just be there at night time, even though it probably wouldn't happen, but it would be so cool to um, <laughs> just be like waiting for the witch in the dark. That sounds, that sounds like a horror movie that needs to happen, doesn't it? So let me know what you think, and there will be, this might be a quite short legend video, there's not too much to it really. Um, other than, you know, loads of people have supposedly kissed the Barney Stone, um, Churchill kissed the Barney Stone, so I think that's why in that poem that I read at the beginning it mentions they could become an MP. I think he was probably already an MP at the time he kissed it. I'm not sure exactly what year Churchill kissed it, but yeah. And if you're watching Barney Stone, there will be more fact or fiction videos coming, Robert Bruce, other things. Um, so yeah. Peace.